What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I wanted to talk about an interesting article that I saw come up on Screen Rant about upcoming D&D projects like the television series, which I feel like probably a lot of people forgot about. This was announced years ago, and we haven't really heard anything about it, so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons TV show gets first positive update after Honor Among Thieves box office struggles. So the D&D Paramount Plus TV show gets first positive update in almost two years and a year after Honor Among Thieves release. Says the CEO of Hasbro, a summary, is, is confident in the future of D&D franchise on screen. Despite the underperformance of Honor Among Thieves, the continuing development of the TV show hints at a possible sequel. The success of the first movie and audience interest in toy property adaptations suggests a promising future for D&D. All right. As audiences eagerly await word on a potential sequel to the movie, which I absolutely think there should be. I feel like it was criminally underrepresented, this movie. I think the release date time frame, I think it's a fantastic film. I'll be honest. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think it did a great job of a slice of life D&D &D movie. It had a lot of good Easter eggs and things for D&D &D fans. I think it was marred, obviously, big black eye from the OGL happening in January to this releasing in March. That was a problem. But I also think the time frame and other movies released around the time frame, for example, the Mario movie, it was bad timing. This is a better summer popcorn flick movie than a February, March release, but either way. Anyway, uh, Hasbro CEO Chris Cox has offered a promising update on the D&D TV show. The iconic tabletop game made its way back to the screen with the 2023 movie D&D Honor Among Thieves, which scored widespread acclaim from critics, but underperformed at the box office. Prior to its release, the TV show spinoff was also revealed to be in the development with Paramount Plus, picking up, right, uh, picking up the rights for an eight-episode run, and we crashed creator Drew Cravello attached to showrunner. During a recent company earnings call... Cox opened up about the future of D&D franchise on screen. The Hasbro CEO remained very confident in moving forward with the various plans for the property across multiple entertainment platforms, particularly that of Paramount Plus TV show, which he confirmed is still in development. We saw a lot of stuff get canceled, a bunch of video games and stuff got canceled, so I really didn't know. I've actually, I'll be honest, I actually forgot that this was a thing, because like I said, we haven't heard anything about it in years. We continue to have a robust entertainment slate that we're working with several partners behind, notably the new streaming ser uh, series for Paramount that we're partnering with them on. Okay, with a budget of $150 million, D D Honor Among Thieves' $208 million haul was seen as a flop by many box office analysts following the movie's release. A variety of reasons were credited as the main reason behind the underperformance, ranging from competition of the Super Mario Bros. movie, which I do agree with, which went on to become the second highest grossing movie of 2023 behind Barbie, and franchise boycotting, uh, franchise fans boycotting both Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro for changes to the lore and the rules of the source game. Boy, are you totally misinformed. Are you, seriously? It had nothing to do with the lore or the rules of the game. The rules of the game haven't changed yet. We haven't even seen the 2024 stuff roll out. We're not seeing that till December. No, it was the horrible OGL situation, which was a means. Oh, my God. Screen rant. Do a little bit of research. If you know that people are boycotting it, learn why. Not because of changes to the lore of the game. <sighs> anyway. Despite these struggles, however, the uh, confirmation that the D&D show is still in development proves a promising sign for the possibility of Honor Among Thieves 2 to properly move forward. Paramount CEO Brian Robbins confirmed, uh, previously confirmed that the studio was still very open to the idea of developing a sequel, providing they could find a way to make it a more feasible budget. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really understand budgets for movies, but $150 million in, like, a, a grand scheme of movies, I don't feel like is that much nowadays for, like, a, a tentpole potential um, IP, uh, you know, well-known IP franchise. And, I mean, I think it did well. I think a lot of the reasons that it did well was they went very heavy on the practical effects for a lot of things, which I thought were really great. Um, and, I mean, it did succeed, right? It's in the black, right? It made $208 million, so it made back what it was put in, but not, like, 
tenfold like you'd expect or you'd want from like a big IP defining movie. But I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, moving forward, cautious about confirming. I've heard several rumors about it, but I don't know anything about it. I feel pretty confident that it might happen. I'd love to see another movie, whether it deals more of backstory of characters or just whatever new adventures they're getting into post Honor Among Thieves. I thought the cast worked very well. I liked the characters quite a bit. I, I, I thought it was done. I really did think it was done well. And I, I loved seeing the behind the scenes. Like, there's so many cool practical effects that they did uh, that, like, I feel like would have been so easy to CG and they chose to go the practical route. And I think that truly does uh, stand out. Given the initial announcement of the D&D TV show indicated it would be a spin-off of Honor Among Thieves and complement the movie, it seems likely that Hasbro's ongoing confidence in developing the show will lead to a sequel. Additionally, the recent success of the Margot Robbie-led Barbie showing audience interest in adaptations of toy properties. I, okay, sure. With the first Honor Among Thieves sitting very high approval ratings on Rotten Tomatoes, holding a 91% from critics and 93 from audiences, it's clear co-writer-director Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly have found the right approach. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's wild when you look at it on something like Rotten Tomatoes. Not that Rotten Tomatoes is the end-all, be-all when it comes to, you know, whether or not something's good or bad movie-wise. I mean, a lot of people consider it to be that. But a 91% critic rating and a 93% audience rating for something that's considered a flop is wild. If this were in a world where prior to streaming it might have been considered a commercial success because you might have made your money back in like vhs and dvd sales or blu-ray sales but given the fact that streaming is how we go about things pretty much nowadays uh you can't really rely on making your money back on the physical media sales but they did bring up toys right there were a lot of tie-in products and different things like that which is very cool um, and you know, I'm, I'm obviously interested in, it. I'd like to see more of the movie. It'd be cool to see other tie-ins, you know, what's going on. I, I, I just really liked the film a lot. And I think it really, I don't know why it did so poorly, honestly. I mean, I know they speculated here that, um, obviously they thought it was boycotting from us. Uh, obviously there was the Super Mario Brothers movie time frame release. It was only two months post the OGL so that, I think, definitely hurt it. I don't know if there's, like, weird stuff happening because this was an Entertainment One film, right, before... And then Watsi obviously was looking to get... We knew at that point they were looking to sell off Entertainment One. They're sort of, um, you know, film and, and television production kind of arm of the company. I actually thought for a while, once we heard the rumors that they were looking to sell Entertainment One, that the movie was never going to come out that they were just going to can the film because, you know, and do like one of these things where they write it off because they were trying to sell Entertainment One. And we know they have since sold it. It's unfortunate that it's going to be tied to Paramount because I'll be honest, I just don't feel like signing up for another streaming service at this point. Um, but I feel like it's my, I have to, uh, if they do end up making the show become a reality. I think a lot of people would like to see more content from the cartoon. A continuation of the cartoon would be really great. This sounds, again, like it's going to be live action. I don't know, depending on what you do, how well this will translate to the small screen. I mean, it was a big, you know, budgeted movie. Uh, if it was to be a continual series over, you know, eight episodes or whatever it is on a streaming service, depending on how small scale you make it, right? If this is primarily a martial party, right? Fighters, rogues, things like that, where there's not a lot of high, crazy magic or... You know, if it's a political intrigue, kind of dealing with stuff in and out of the city and not fighting beholders and other things like that, you might not have an issue being able to make it work very well on a, you know, a smaller scale, right? Think of this more like an Andor, right, where it's a show that's a little more small scope and it does well and is treated well because it's at dealing with like an aspect of the game, not trying to encompass the entirety of everything like some other, you know, like Star Wars related shows are trying to do. So I don't know. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. It is interesting, though. I think it's just wild how how bad the take is on that we're boycotting because of rules changes or lore changes, but either way. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. I'll see you all next time.